Okay, oh, I have got Villa here at minus 108. Uh, host in Crystal Palace at plus 300. The draw is at plus 275. The under over is at two and a half with the over being minus 113. Brad, I, I've got to... Uh, I went through all the Premier League sides as I did with Bundesliga, Serie A and La Liga. And I've got... I want to oppose Villa on the road regardless because they try and play the same way as they do at home and they get caught out. But at home, different different team altogether. I think they win this. I'm not complicating it. I'm going with Villa to beat Palace. Yeah, I kind of agree with you here. But when I was handicapping this match, I thought there were other markets that I were interested in uh, that backed Aston Villa. Bas basically something like Villa to win in over two and a half goals, Villa to win and both teams to score. And I started to find myself get a little greedy. Even Villa team total over one and a half was something that I liked here. Um, you said it well, uh, plus 0 0.3 expected goal differential per 90 at home last season, um, which drastically improved as Unai Emery uh, joined the fold for this team. Aston Villa is going to be a truck, and what we've seen so far this season is we they don't care about Europa and Premier League congested schedules. They're going to play their style and their brand of football in every single match. So, of course, when they're playing at home, they're going to get that added bump. Like I said earlier in my in my last breakdown, Crystal Palace were one of those rebound games uh, last last week, but I think that kind of drops back down a little bit and goes closer to the mean uh, for their XG. Right now they have an XG of 1.74. I think that's a little high, especially with the, I, I, I don't want to say lack of creativity, but the, la the lack of, of players providing service. Um, Eze has been the absolute bright spot for this team uh, shooting at least three shots per game. They're one of the top teams in shots on target per 90, mainly because of his his accuracy, especially off the free kicks. But even though they're one of the most accurates, they're, they're also one of the least um, net shots on target per 90, which means, yeah, they're taking a million shots um, for their standard, but it's still not going to be a standard that I think is going to help them be competitive at home. I ended up passing on this game um, just because I, I had too many things that I liked. And normally when that happens, that means I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I, you could you could talk me into an Aston Villa money line, Aston Villa team total, Aston Villa both teams to score and over and over two and a half goals. There's a lot to like in this match. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really liking Marco here. Villa to score twice in this game, and then I mean you're going to get paid at minus one one five whether they win the game or not. I just think Villa, especially against Palace, because Palace don't keep the ball very well. They're they're happy to isolate their players and say, "Come on, let's attack." And then two or three seconds later, they're having to defend. I think that plays straight into Villa's hands. Um, and I can see over two and a half goals in the game as well at minus one one three. Yeah, I think you summed this game up perfectly at the start, Flash, when you said, you know, Villa are trying to play the same way home and away, and they've been caught out by good teams when playing away, because, you know, if that high line, if that high press isn't completely succinct, you're going to get exposed against good teams, and that's been the case against both Liverpool and Newcastle, whether they played over the press, around the press, through the press, you know, it's left that high line completely exposed. It's looked far too easy to play against them, but uh, at Villa Park, you know, rather than sort of committing tactical suicide, it's, it's looked much more aligned with what we expect from a, an Unai Emery team. And their record at Villa Park under him has been very, very impressive. Ten wins from 14 Premier League games. That includes a 1-0 victory over Palace in March. They're actually on an eight-game winning streak at home in the Premier League, conceding just two goals, if you include the back end of last season. Um, they're actually plus 120 uh, back in March when they beat Palace. Now, as you see, they're minus money. I think that move is absolutely fair enough because... Villa have strengthened that squad in the summer. Palace have lost Saha and Elise is still out injured. So you can understand. In fact, you probably expect that that price to have moved a little bit further. But for possibly injuries in the Villa central defence, Diego Carlos, the latest to go off injured, um, which might mean a reshuffle tactically from Villa, who were playing that 3-5-2. Three, three, they might have to go back to a back four again this time around because they're running out of fit and available centre-halves. But... Um, what puts me off this game? Uh, not a huge amount. I guess it's just the Crystal Palace factor. Roy Hodgson, the ability to organise, set up and frustrate. Palace don't or basically never play with two forwards. They never start with two forwards in the team. They're blessed with quite a lot of solid kind of attacking midfielders, plus 
They've got that ability to pack the midfield and play those kind of destroyers in front of the defence. They'll head everything, they'll tackle everything. So you do need a bit of ingenuity to, to open them up at times. And Wendy is obviously injured long term. So there are players elsewhere who can kind of pick up the mantle. But um, I think Villa deserve favourites if I had to I'd back them at minus 108. Possibly could be a little bit shorter than that based on what we've seen in the last six months. But um, yeah, I, I think there's, for me, there's there's more appealing bets elsewhere, purely just because of the Crystal Palace factor and almost the respect I've got for Hodgson in, in sort of setting his team up to, to contain in these kind of fixtures. Yeah, I definitely see over two and a half goals at minus one one three as a complete runner. I expect Villa to score twice. I expect Villa to actually win. I want to be with Villa at home, away from home, regardless of who it is. I'm going to find a way of maybe not them winning, but scoring against Villa. on I don't see many Villa clean sheets on the road, so remember that. Uh, and also, let's uh, remind ourselves that we're on the back of an international break, and next week is the Champions League. Let's have a little look at the official picks. Villa money line for me at minus 108. And I will tell you that when I wrote this, it was minus 120. So I'm actually 12 cents better off. But in some sports, you would worry. In soccer, football, no, we're not worried. We'll take the bigger price every day of the week. That's what... 